Now, the Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. Sponsored by Ohio Northern University. The best discoveries come from the unexpected. By the Toledo Clinic. Choose well, feel better. By PT Link Physical Therapy. Feel the difference and get relief now. And by Frickers, the home for fun, food, sports, and spirits. Now, here's Jordan Strack. Welcome into Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. It is officially playoff time. Divisions one, two, three, and seven all in action tonight. Most of the top teams in the area had buys this week. Remember, every team in Ohio made the playoffs this season. Let's get this show started. Our top game, the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets, 6-0, ranked sixth in Ohio in Division One. The Jackets, the Northern Lakes League champs, welcoming in Kettering Fairmont out of the Dayton area. Perrysburg starting quarterback Christian Golgen not playing. He's quarantined right now. Sophomore TJ Tackett's had to start. This is the first play of the game. Fumbles the football. Fairmont would scoop it up. They would score just a few seconds in. It's already a 7-0 deficit for the Jackets. But they come right back. Handed off to their superstar running back, Connor Wallenzak. Finds a crease. He's into the end zone. Perrysburg ties it up at 7. But the Jacket defense would get beat up in the first half. Gave up some big plays like this one. A stunner here. After a perfect regular season, Perrysburg falls in the first round, 41-14. to I'm stunned at how we played in the first half. Um, we haven't done that this, this year. They're really good at what they do. And, and I think our kids let it snowball on them a little bit. And by the time you snap out of it with, with what they do as a scheme, it's really hard to get back into it. I'd like to have our senior quarterback. We didn't. The sophomore kid played his butt off. He played a great football game. But, you know, our thing all season's been physicality and run the ball, gain yards on the ground, and they stuffed us. All right, let's head down to Dayton now. Division one matchup here, Finley and Springboro. Trojans on offense trying to get something going here. Max Roth lobs the pass. Downfield to A.J. Adams, who hauls it in for a big game. Trojans, though, can't get six. They would come away with some points in the drive. Trace Robinson right through the uprights, but Springboro was just too much for the Trojans tonight. They punch it in for six here. Finley's season comes to an end. They lose 28 to 19. And Whitmer, a very tough test here. Now down near Dayton. Springfield, one of the top teams in Ohio. Second quarter, Panthers down 7-0, but they would knot it up here. Hand it off to Jaden Gibson, who punches it in. They're back in the game, but then it's a direct snap to Gibson again. Dives in for another score. Whitmer had a 14-7 lead, but Springfield just too much in this one down the stretch. Whitmer's season comes to an end. They fall 27-17. A couple NLL rivals meeting in round one. Springfield and Northview Wildcats won the regular season matchup. Springfield gets the early lead. Blue Devils up 10-0, but Northview comes back. Logan Thor on the quarterback keeper goes untouched into the end zone for the Wildcats' first points of the game. Then moments later, Springfield trying to come back the other way, but the pass is picked off by Drew Sellers. He's headed the other way, making guys miss. Goes all the way for a pick six. Northview would get the two-point conversion. They were up 15-10. Second half, Thor dropping back to pass. Looking downfield, finds Nick Schaefer. An incredible grab at the one-yard line. And then a couple plays later, they go with a quarterback sneak. Thor into the end zone. Northview shuts out Springfield in the second half. They win it 29-10, and Christy Kopanis has more. In a matter of a minute, Northview went from being down 10 0 to scoring 15 points. And then in the second half, their defense held tough, led by Drew Sellers and his two interceptions on the night. Northview gets their first playoff win in school history. I mean, everything. I mean, you know, I can't describe the feeling I have right now. It's the best feeling in the world. We were fired up. I mean, you know, you could, you could feel it. You know, I mean, it was just, you know, everybody was so happy and excited. Well, it was outstanding. Our defense was great all night. They gave one explosive play, but everything else was, was great. So our defense was really, in all facets, they, uh, they tackled well. They did some good things. Uh, so, I mean, the sellers made two great picks on uh, deep ball, uh, going into, thrown into the wind, and the wind held it up. And uh, But he made some really nice plays. Next up for Northview, not an easy task. They go on to face Central Catholic, and Doug Downing said this is the best Central Catholic team he's ever seen. Reporting from Northview tonight, Christy Kopanis, WTOL 11. Christy, thanks. Also in Division 2, St. Francis hosting North Ridgeville in Week 1. This game played out at Clay tonight. Knights were up 10-0 at halftime, and then opening drive of the second half. Stephen McCoy with the ball. Breaks an arm tackle. He would reach for the goal line. They would rule him out, though, at the one-yard line. 
No worries though, Knights rush to the line. They would snap it quick, punch it in. It's 17 nothing Knights. I think the officials give McCoy the benefit of the doubt on this next one because they ruled him out earlier. So he rushes this one in. They call it a touchdown, it's 24 nothing. Fourth quarter, the only punch of the game for the Knights and it still worked out for him. This thing was muffed. The Knights would recover in the red zone and they would share the wealth a bit. Jadian Harris punches it in, running clock the rest of the game. Knights win 38 nothing. Here's John Monk. Jordan, I arrived right when halftime started and even though St. Francis was up 10 to nothing, everyone in the stands on St. Francis side was murmuring that it was quite an ugly first half, but Coach Chipka said that he really challenged his players to shore up those penalties and really execute their plays in the second half, and it paid off. 24 unanswered points in the second half, a staunch defense, and a dominating run game give the St. Francis Knights a 38 to nothing playoff win. It feels amazing to be able to win this game and be able to move on to the next week of the playoffs. So we're just happy, just one win at a time. I was proud of the way that we, that we got out. We played with some great tempo. We played with a sense of urgency. And then we just didn't execute uh, in the critical moments. So um, we, we got corrected that in the second half. And I was awfully pleased with the way that we drove and finished, finished drives in that second half. And Coach Shipka says that they have a lot of work to do over the next seven days because now St. Francis travels to Anthony Wayne for the second round of the playoffs. Reporting from Clay High School, I'm John Monk. WTOL 11. John, thanks. Our final stop in Division II, Fremont Ross hosting a home game tonight, welcoming in Normandy. First quarter, Little Giants on defense. Pass here, a high arching pass, and it would land right into the hands of Braden John, who comes away with the interception, and then with the short field off the turnover, Caden Holmes connects with Anthony Van. He bobbled a little bit, but he comes down with it for Fremont Ross, and that is a touchdown. Little Giants not done. Their halfback, LeBron's Barnett, looking for an opening and he would find it. Following his blockers, they lead him into the end zone for another touchdown for the Little Giants. And then, this time more from Fremont Ross. From roughly the 50 yard line, I say roughly because Zach, our photographer, didn't write down where they actually were, it's fine. Another touchdown here. Little Giants absolutely destroy them tonight. 71 to nothing. Defensively, just the pressure up front and our linebackers be able to create. I think we had like four turnovers, four interceptions, I believe, something like that. Um, I think we played very physical and, and they weren't able to match our physicality. I think offensively, I think we did very well running the football. We performed really good. We got to get our younger, get, younger guys in. That makes me happy. All right, time for our first break here on Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday. When we come back, we're heading up to the small town of Ida, Michigan. We're going to tell you the story of one girl with big dreams. That is up next on Charlie's Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram Big Board Friday.